We're live. Yay. Yay. Good morning, everyone, or depending on where you are in the world, it could be afternoon or evening. Uh, my name is Alex Plaxon, uh, and I'm here with Lindsay Martin Bilbrey. Um, we're both from Nifty Method, which I'm very excited to say that. Um, I don't know. What happens? You join the company and all of the events shut down. And so normally know. we are all together as one. They forgot to really happen. Boo, coronavirus. So um, this is a new thing that we're doing. Um, it's called Nifty Method Live. Um, and this will be a weekly thing that Lindsay and I are doing to kind of talk about different things going on in the industry, um, hot topics that we're hearing about, um, things that we're writing about, um, and basically just an opportunity to share with you, talk to you, engage with you um, on a weekly basis. Um, so it, it's been a while since we've done this. I'm very excited. Um, no other guests this week. It's just the two of us. Um, but we're talking about something really cool today. Um, and it, it's something that was brought up um, actually from one of our clients, um, the CRAN Initiative. Um, but it was this idea of um, with corporate social responsibility, how do you still do that during a pandemic when you can't meet live? Um, and, and how do you take these opportunities that may be virtual and still have that social component, which is so important for any CSR that you do for your events or your company, right? Um, so Lindsay, I, I, I kind of want to hear from you a little bit about your experience with CSR in the past and, yeah. and what's, what's going on right now. Uh, what are you seeing in the industry? Yeah, I mean, corporate social responsibility is always one of those wonderful things at events, right? Because it's more than a happy hour. It's really a place where you, you're you coming to these destinations and you're helping helping the brands that you're working with that are providing sponsorships so that it's not just a return on investment because you're getting them leads, but you're really talking about the culture and helping them walk their talk. And so CSR at events before meant that we all gathered together in these big rooms. I think one of the ones I remember one year when we were at an MPI event, we all put together uh, quilts, right? Everyone was doing the hand knitting that went in for that. And then at a couple of other events, we all went in at San Francisco and did soup kitchen. So it's, it's little things where it's more than just we donated the food afterwards, but it's still grounded in that sustainability. And as Tahira always talks about it, like the triple P's, people, profit and the planet. So CSR in many ways is so intrinsically tied into the culture of face to face, not only for our events, but also for our employee internal gatherings, right? So when the Crown Initiative founder, Brian Ware, and I started talking about ways to help them continue to extend the, the things they've been doing with groups like Cisco and AAA and Netflix, we were like, well, what does it really need to do to mimic that face-to-face, -face, right? Because you can still create, you know, color at home, you can still go in and do different things. So for us, it was a really interesting opportunity because I think even I not as social a creature as some of our friends that I'm missing that a lot. Like I was oh, yeah. looking at, I was looking at our August calendar and usually like the second week of August we're at connect and then we're at ASAE. And then we have inbound right after that last year, this time you and I were basically living out of suitcases together as we passed through the aisles of the mini airports. And oh, yeah. I was like, Oh no, I won't be able to go out and hang out with anybody. It was just like this real grounding moment. And so I was like, these CSR events are a way where it's not just like hashtag entitlement airport life. It's it's a way of helping us once again, really ground ourselves and say, we need to be creating meaningful connections and engagement is at the top of everyone's lists from a virtual event, virtual trade show, virtual employee gathering piece. So how can we do that with the cultural ideals and the mission and the values that these companies already have? I'm like hashtag rambling because of all the coffee <laughs> this morning. But it's it's true. And I think what people don't realize is, and I, I've, I almost caution a lot of these organizations who are very budget tight right now, um, who are saying we just don't have the money to do CSR. Um, it's not something that's important to the, the company. It's not something we should be investing in. 
we can't do it because it's virtual. Um, I, I think there's a lot of unknowns right now uh, with it. Um, but what's really important is you have to think back to CSR and what is its purpose, yeah. which is engaging your employees or your stakeholders or your attendees at your events. Um, it's garnering that positive public, uh, you know, positivity and publicity. Um, and then also creating more loyal customers. People need to know that you're doing it. Um, I mean, I have never seen a CSR event happen you know, tied to an event that wasn't somehow publicized in some way, whether through a blog post um, or through social. But to be honest, where I see it most uh, talked about is from the attendees who are well, doing like, it. We were talking about the transactional cost. And I was like, you know, and that's such a way when we think about events, like it does cost money. Going virtual when we've already planned these magnificent in-person events we realize the brands and associations, everybody's struggling to find the money, but the value of it from just a, a soul perspective, there are a lot of people now more so than ever before that that safety net of what was supposed to be a job, a career, paying your mortgage, eating the food, doing that, like that's not there anymore. And CSR events directly help support what was already a vulnerable population. And now in many ways, we're the vulnerable population, right? Yeah. Like unemployment is so high and, and in a lot of the places, our country in particular here in the States, but globally. And so value and cost is always a place where I go, mm, but don't we need to think about the overall value to the company far beyond the PR that we can get? It's like, if we're truly going to say our company's values are this, what better way to do it than X, not to mention the increase in mental well-being that well, you can pass on to whoever is participating in this event. Like a happy hour is fantastic, but the, the simple act of gathering together just like this and participating in the same experience. Yes, it's not going to be as great as face to face, but you know, you can go and like post your pictures on YouTube or post your pictures on the gram and think about the different ways that together we accomplish this, even though we can't actually be together. Well, and I'm glad you brought up the mental state of people, right? Mental health is so important and it cannot be underestimated that CSR is an opportunity to give your employees, give your attendees a sense of purpose, um, a sense of pride that they're having an impact um, on, on someone else's life. Um, and for a lot of people, people who live alone, people who, um, who have been furloughed that's really really important right now just from a mental health perspective um and so in that way uh csr has a really huge role to play um in, in making people feel like they have a purpose well, um it's normal right like that's i yeah. think more than anything even outside even if you haven't been furloughed or laid off or you are you are you are dealing with everything that is not normal around us. One of my friends who's an essential employee from a marketing, like a construction marketing hardware store, he was saying yesterday, he was like, I've eaten all the foods, I've drank all the water and done all the things, and I'm hiding in a closet from my family because I just can't anymore today because it's just getting to me. And he's got a job that like the the pressure. And it's like this weight that is settled on us. And it we had that slight reprieve. And now with all of the static and noise of, is it going to get worse? Is it going to end? What does this information say? So I, I think that really the value is to, to all of us. Um, I would love an opportunity to come hide in my home office and participate in an event that allows me to connect with other humans who don't need anything from me. Yep. except for the value of participating in the event together, knowing I'm doing good in the world. And that just, man, just even saying it out loud makes me want to go find something to do it, like water builds. You hear me, Doc Henley? Let's hang out. <laughs> well, and I think that's so interesting, just when you think about um, ways that you can do virtual uh, CSR, um, you know, there are things that are singular, but can mm -hmm. still connect you to other people. Um, knowing that you are a small part of something much bigger yeah. um, also has a huge impact uh, from a mental state.
Yeah. Well, and I think too, as we, we're we traveling that weird place where we've done hybrid. I mean, you and I have done hybrid events before with IMAX and we've all been kind of party where we've tried to figure out ways to connect the people at home and the people on the floor, right? So now we have these three interesting conundrums from an events perspective. How do we do it where it's 1000% virtual? How do we do it where one has a foot in both worlds and we have the options from a safety perspective or a peace of mind, whatever it is that your attendees are choosing their path forward and then just being there together face to face. So concentrating on that virtual and that hybrid experience, I think CSR is gonna be an interesting component to watch from a social aspect because it really does allow us to think of activities that are high engagement and not directly related to education and beholden to a speaker having to come up with the idea. It's not directly related to a sponsor having to come up with the idea, right? It's, it's really built around the idea of public good and has so many scalable possibilities. It can be as simple as mailing packets of crayons. We'll use the crayon initiative since that's what spurred this conversation, right? Mailing packets of crayons to someone's house and then still having them gathered together in a great big pinwheel when you're, you're sitting in Moscone once we get back there. And the people at home are there with their packets, sorting them into paper bags that are branded and then going to their place as well as the people there at Moscone. And so like that's, that's a really neat component that even before all of this happened, we hadn't seen it really that integrated. And so in many ways, I'm thankful. One of the few silver linings of this pandemic is that it's going, oh, oh, we can do that. This is what mm -hmm. it looks like. And the best practices we already had allow us to do it. We just need to take that step and build it in. Well, and I, I know we promised everyone a couple tips about this, so I, I did want to talk about that, and this is a good segue for that, is when you are doing things and sending things to people's homes and they're doing them alone, they're doing the same thing as other people, but they are doing it alone, they're not in the same space, um, how do you still get that publicity out there and how do you still get that photo of everyone in a huge ballroom, you know, sorting crayons or putting wow. together, putting together uh, hands for children whose hands have been, you know, blown off in other countries. Um, how, how do you get that, that photo that is so precious to you and your publicity of this CSR activity? Yeah. And that is what makes the social media aspect of this so important is you really need that, content that is created by the attendee right so for the marketing people at home this is that ever so popular user generated content or ugc but i love it right because you can take it and it's no lift at all to us marketing people it's it's your attendees getting excited and snapping a fix you know a photo of me and you going hey we did this together and, and so there are things that you can do to make it easier, right, uh, for people to do that. Um, one, you can create a digital landing page that is like a, a photo booth, right, with the branding already on it um, that they can immediately share to their social pages um, just by logging in through them. Um, so that's like one opportunity that i've seen um and make it cool right like add some cool graphics in there um make it so that more than one person can come onto the page at one time um have it so that the photos then populate onto the landing page and create a collage of everyone else's photos and for anybody who's starting to get nervous like you don't have to do this there's great companies out there i mosaic luster um, there was one that was doing it in Seattle whose name I can't remember. The dog is rearranging my corner, y'all. I'm sorry. So, but like groups like that will help you do it. So literally all you have to do and your attendee has to do is do the basic setup and then voila, you're in. Yeah. So, and then including a hashtag, right? And it, it should be specific not only to the event, but to the CSR activity. Um, something that makes people want to share it. <laughs> And, and be a part of a movement. Um, I don't think it can be underestimated that people have a strong desire to be part of social movements. Um, so if you can paint it in that way, um, I think that's really important. Um, and, and how do you get people to know this? Um, I think we are so slammed with a million emails right now. Email is not the best way. You, you should still use email to let people know, hey, you can go to this page. Um, as soon as you get your package of whatever sent to your home, uh, you can go to this page. Um, but also include a nice little postcard in the package. Like, 
it 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 sounds really old school. But no, direct mail is big right now, and this is great opportunity is for your sponsors to get involved. Right? They want to brand something. Here we go. It's practical and going to be good for the ROI. So just create a postcard and and literally put one, steps one two three of you know how can they get involved in sharing it? How can they be part of the movement? How can they create their photo that's going to be part of a larger collage um, of other photos um, and, and maybe even include a photo from another event, right? If this is something that this group that you're doing the CSR for has done before, you can include photos and examples of other groups. So if you have a group that already did it before you, or you may end up being the guinea pig and be the first ones doing it. Um, it makes you cool to be an early adopter. That's what they does. call it in the tech space. You're a cool person. Yeah. Um, but then share that example. So share that collage, right? So people can see what the finished product looked like um, so that then they want to be a part of that for their organization. Well, it sounds like you've been compiling a bunch of these tips. Have you been writing an article or something? Maybe I have. Maybe. Um, <laughs> yes, I have. Um, and it is going to be uh, going out, uh, I believe, this weekend, actually. Oh. And where can we find it? Uh, smart meetings. Of course, of course, because this is what smart event planners do, my friends. We take ideas and then we copy and steal them from all of us and share the learning so that we can come back in. So we hope you check out Alex's article coming up in smart meetings. We'll also be sending it out, dropping it here on our social. If you're not following us, check us out at, at Nifty Method, but you can always check it out on me and Alex's social, on the Twitter, on the gram, on all the places one finds all the information or check on over on our blog, blog.niftymethod.com. And I think there's a webinar too that we have coming up. I know you and Leah had been sparking some cool ideas in the background. Do we want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, coming up on the 29th, correct? I think so. It's yes. pretty soon. Uh, so the 29th is coming up. Uh, you should have gotten a promo email if you're part of our list. If you're not part of our list, you should get on it. Um, but we have a great webinar coming up with Brian Ware, who's the founder uh, of the CRAN Initiative. Uh, who's going to be sharing his best practices, his lessons learned from doing CSR for over 10 years in the business um, of CSR with organizations like AAA and Netflix, um, and talking about how he's had to pivot into virtual and how um, you can do that too for your events. All right. Well, we're super excited that you've joined us today. Alex, anything else for the people at home? Uh, no, I think that's it. Just make sure that you check out the article. Uh, go sign up for the webinar uh, on the 29th. It's going to be fantastic. Um, and if you have any questions about how you can bring something like this to your event, please feel free to reach out to us um, and, and let us know what you're thinking. And, and we'll either try to connect you with the right people uh, or help you execute it as well. Hey, we every appreciate it. I'm so excited that you joined us. Last week, we had Rachel Steffen from Snowball. So if you haven't checked out on what it looks like to do influencer marketing in the middle of a pandemic, we highly, highly encourage you to sneak on over and see the ways that you can snowball your ideas. But no matter what you're looking forward with your events and marketing, check us out every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. Is my time zone right? Yes, my time zones are right. And we'll be talking to you about the latest and nifty events, marketing, creative, and amazing speaking ideas. We'll see you soon.